heard of the banking model of education? Anybody here ever been to a bank? In blue, you ever been to a bank? I'm sorry, the female in blue. Oh, yeah. Okay, what happens when you go to the bank? If I give you $20 and tell you to go put it in the bank, what are you going to do? I put it in your And they put it in your account, right? And the next day or two days later, you can go and you can do what? Pull out $20. But this time, let's say you get it in four fives, right? Same money, different design, right? Different look. For some of you, that may be what you think being in college is, right? I go to class, my job is to learn what you told me and give it back to you. I might change it a little bit, right? Because it's worked for me, I've been successful, but ultimately, I'm just giving you what you gave me. What I'm trying to convince you to do today is to do more than that. Don't just give us back what we gave you. We know what we gave you, right? We already read it, we already thought about it. What we want to know is what do you think about it? What does it mean to you? Why does it matter to you as a student, right? Why is this idea of being a novice going to fundamentally shift what you believe it needs to be an academic at UTPA? What are you going to demand of us as your instructors at UTPA because you want it to matter to you? Because you want to be interested, because you want to be challenged, because you want to make a difference for somebody else. Right? Okay. So how do you think and act like a novice? Penrose and Gessler say that one of the first things that we have to do is we have to know that text and knowledge claims are authored and they're negotiable, right? There's a famous guy who's almost impossible to read. They say you don't read Burke, you reread -read Burke. I've read, reread Burke and still don't understand most of what he said. But this I get. He says you walk into a room, you walk into a parlor and there's a conversation going on. These people have been hanging out at the party all night long you had to go to your wayless birthday party, and so you're like three hours late. And by the time you get to the party, they're all talking about what this thing that happened, right? What do you try and do to figure out what happened? What would you do? Ask somebody, yeah? Now you might go, who got it on video? Please tell me somebody's already put it on Facebook, right? But pre-Facebook, you had to do word of mouth, right? You had to go ask around and see what people were saying. And you'd get about eight different versions, and then what would you do? Yeah, figure out your own version, right? Put, pull the pieces together that seem to be the same and say, okay, that's probably the closest I'm going to get to what happened. That's what it means when they say texts are constructed, that they're ongoing and negotiable. Everything you read this semester, we want you to situate like it's a physics experiment. Any big Bang <coughs> theory, theory fans in here? Does it mean None of you watch The Big Bang Theory? You're missing, oh, there you go. You're missing the funniest show on television. I want you to shelve in your readings, right? Position them in space and in time. Figure out, okay, who are these people? Where were they talking? And why were they talking about it, right? No, our parties aren't as exciting as the parties you go to, but they can be still be pretty cool. So, so think of it as that conversation that you want to understand. It's not just about transferring that information again, right? It's not just about giving it back to us the way we gave it to you. Your job as a student scholar is to identify, sort, and evaluate those claims, right? We're not searching for facts. Anybody in here already comfortable with that language, the difference between a fact and a claim? Where have we picked on this side? You, in the white t-shirt. What do you think is the difference between a fact and a claim? A fact and a claim? Yeah.
students in particular, every reading they're going to do is going to talk about student writers. And they're going to talk about freshman writers. What my students are. Who my students are, right? So why can't they talk back and say, you're saying this about me, but that's not me. Right? You say that I have this problem, but I don't have that problem. Instead, this is the problem I have, and you're overlooking that. Contribute, right? Find that controversy and give us your perspective. And don't feel like you have to choose sides, right? It's not agree or disagree. The hardest thing that I still struggle with in academia is that it's not black and white anymore, right? It's never as easy as you're right and she's wrong. But instead, we all have these valuable claims, right? And I have to figure out which one matters for my situation, my time and my space.
accept the fact that our job kid that matters if you ask my opinion. No offense to the Smith family. Somebody smarter than I know why this won't work? Says the volume is up. Should have tested the audio. Nobody? 